Good evening and welcome to the Jackson Christian Eagles show tonight. Of course, as always with me, Coach Brian Bullard and the head coach himself, the pride of Arkansas. We're going to say he's the pride of the whole state, Darby Palmer. These are the two busiest young men I know right now. And we had a great week of football last week. We're going to have an even better week. Or actually, we're already having a better week of football. Gentlemen, I'm going to let you all take it away because we had a big win. Absolutely, Coach. We uh... – Playing Pop ECS City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian crowd. Athletics. Um, and, and came out, you know, the kind of first drive was a little bit rocky, and we were able to, to make a play to get the ball back. And then from there, offense was executed. Um, de defense played well. It was a good night for Jackson Christian. Absolutely. And, and coming off of Columbia Academy, it was really – I was very proud of our guys of how they responded through the week of practice, their focus, mental preparation to play a team like ECS. ECS is a well-coached football team plays in D2, 2A in that West region. They're going to compete with North Point and St. George's and Lausanne uh, at a high level. So I was very proud of how our guys executed all three phases of the game. You know, we faced over the past weeks some of the finest running backs in the entire state of Tennessee. ECS didn't come in here without talent. They came in. Garrison was a great running back. He knew you how to pick his own. But Xander Carroll scared the – wits out of me i'm serious that kid he a great cutback runner has more strength and he's faster than he looks absolutely and you know that was one of our big concerns of him getting to the edge and not only getting to the edge but us losing contain mm -hmm. on him and him being able to on those quarterback rollouts or quarterback design runs him being able to cut back field and so we lost contain a few times and then we also didn't stay at home on the back side so all the good that that we're about to hit on there's four or five things that we hit on film in each position that we can still get better at because we don't want to peak now. We want to be peaking later in the season. But very proud of our guys and how we executed. Absolutely. Brian, another one of those big schools. We play. This is double A school. Yeah. We have played the big boys, and the big <clears throat> boys are good. Jack Patterson from North Point is lighting them up in Memphis right now. We've done well with that. And, of course, Brian, always his enthusiasm on the side. I love it. <laughs> well, you know, we talked about this, I think, on the last show. And to get to where we want to go, our ultimate goal, we we got to play teams that are bigger, faster, stronger than us. And, you know, our guys were up for the challenge. We went over there last year and, and played a solid ball game. Uh, just couldn't get it going offensively. Uh, competed with those guys. And then we knew um, coming into this one that we talked about how well coached they are, uh, what a good program that is. And, you know, our guys, it's, it's like there was a little bit of extra focus after the Columbia Academy, you know, half and all the rain and all the stuff that went on. And it, it, I'm not going to say that um, we didn't show up. Columbia Academy was doing a good job. It, we were just a little flat. And, and it, was, it was maybe that renewed sense of focus, renewed sense of urgency. And, you know, we, we're going to talk about some numbers and we're going to talk to a couple guys that had great nights. But, you know, I, I love the fact that, you know, we, we executed offensively, but defensively too. And you mentioned the quarterback, and you know, I coached the D lineman, and we talked all week about you know, staying in our gaps and, and keeping him in the pocket. And that was a tough guy to keep in the pocket. But I feel yes. like our guys battled. I feel like we rallied to the football. We gave up the one run there uh, we weren't real happy about for the touchdown. Um, but other than that, I mean, it, it was a good night, and, and we're excited uh, for our guys. But we got to put that one behind us and, you know, get ready for another game this week. And absolutely, and, and, and very proud of, of Cam Boyd, White Jones, and the rest of our captains for really gathering our guys and refocusing everybody. And you can tell uh, we have a, a group of guys with strong leadership at the top, and, and that's impressive. Absolutely, and I'm going to go back a week since you introduced the leadership. Somebody, coaches, we talk to them and we give them pep talks and we make corrections, but had to come from the captains. Y'all came out with a little pep in your step. I'm big on body language. And even though we didn't get to play, when y'all appeared on the field, you could tell a whole difference in y'all's body language at Columbia Academy. And it carried over the other night. Before we move on into our next opponent coming up, let's talk about Jalen made a big play. I'll just go ahead and say it. The ball's intercepted. They've got the football. And he did as good a job. And I know he plays defensive back, but he stripped that football and he had presence to get on the football. Well, it's heart. Those type of plays are all heart and extra effort. And, you know, um, quarterback threw a ball, trying to lob it over their outside backer. Outside backer made a good play on the ball. It, you know, you could go palms up mentality right there. You could say, oh, he got the pick. But instead, 
man, he, he battled and got the ball back, and we were able to get a first down out of it after he stripped the ball. So, excellent job, extra effort play. Yeah, yeah. I, I think in three plays we scored, something yeah, like and that. And we scored the next four times we and, had the yeah, football. You could kind of tell that, that those are the kind of plays that are deflating. And had we thrown a pick there, you know, who, who knows what the swing could have been. But it, you got an interception, and, and our, our guy goes up and takes it away and recovers it. That was huge. And, and we, we could talk a lot about big plays and yards and all that, but that's the kind of play that doesn't show up on the, as much on the stats. And what a huge play that was. And, you know, then our offense got rolling from there. Well, you made me think of something. Guys that don't get a lot of credit sometimes, the offensive line, they could have let down. You say, well, they didn't catch the football and they didn't make the strip and recovery and all that. Those guys came out, and actually they were blocking good when we had the interception. They got better. They won the battle at the line of scrimmage, and that's what it takes to play winning football. Absolutely. It all starts in the trenches on both sides of the ball. And and our offense and defensive line did an outstanding job. Now, if somebody wanted me, uh, and they asked me, and and Brian, I forgot to tell you about the comment about last night's uh, scrimmage game, JV uh, game. It was played under game conditions, folks, even though I use the word scrimmage sometimes because we don't punt it and uh, we do take it and place the ball. But other than that, it's all game. I thought we had an excellent effort against a very good team, and it was a short notice. We had no prep for them. They had none for us. Our kids just got out there and executed. Absolutely. And, and JV games are getting harder and harder to find and, and getting people to – to stay and play JV, but we take a lot of pride in the depth that we have and the growth of our program and our guys getting those extra reps. And that's what JV games are all about for us. And our guys did a great job against a higher classification opponent um, that traveled down two hours. I'm very thankful that they were willing to do that to get this game in. And I think both sides got better. Yes, they did. Oh, it was impressive, his scrimmage. And you got some good reps for Austin Kelly and also, uh, let's see, um, Elijah. Elijah, I was about to mm-hmm. call him something else because we've got a freshman quarterback too. Mason Vaughn, is he the interception specialist now? <laughs> Two on Friday night and one mm-hmm. last night. Absolutely. He, Mason does a great job for us. And, 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 again, that's what the JB games are all about, to give guys confidence because that's our future. That's the future of our program, and we're excited about our future. Absolutely. And, of course, the outstanding power passing game was wonderful. Now, we moved the football on the ground, but, folks, we had some great catches uh, I know Blake Rowland made a couple of them. Mason Vaughn, I bet the only thing he can't do and he may can do that is play a guitar, and I bet he can do that too. He's got great hands. He's got excellent hands and just vision and also just overall athlete. He's very he's very well – How would we, we talked about it the other day in the office. He's very smooth with how he goes about yeah, things. Yeah, he's not going um, to line up and run a 40 that's going to blow you away. But he, he just kind of is able to maneuver his body and, and just runs away from guys. Last night it was like, ah, they're going to catch him, and he just keeps on he keeps on going. And, and he is, uh, you know, defensively he just goes to the right spot, just has a nose for the ball. Um, and when they throw it his way, he doesn't miss it. So. Well, you brought up something. When we got it going, we got our kids, and they got first series a little, little bit. They yeah. kind of moved us around. Well, guess what? We played pretty good defensive football. We had some big sticks. We had one guy that – I thought I didn't. I'm surprised their young man got up off the field. We hit him that hard. And uh, you're getting good play out of some of the – the freshmen are getting a lot of playing time. That's important so that they don't gather rust before they do become valuable in varsity. Absolutely. And if you look at a lot of our special teams, there's a, there's freshmen and sophomores scattered out through all of our special teams. And, and we take pride in that because we want to get those guys Friday night reps early on. That way the jitters are out and they can say that they've played underneath the Friday Night Lights. Absolutely. Before we move on, I'm going to let Coach talk about Harding Academy coming up here, not the Harding Academy in Arkansas. And there is one there besides Harding University, but we'll talk about them. Um, Somebody asked me, they said you was the pride of Arkansas. It's Valley View High School is where you went, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, people want to know about that. They they don't claim him, though. They don't claim him. I thought he was the front. (laughs) Because we are advancing on Eric Cohue, and I know Eric is very proud. And he's pulling for you to to break that record of most wins and stuff. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Eric show up one night. Because I ran into Jerry Eskew, and he talks to Eric from time to time. Coach, we've got a team that they're kind of rebuilding. They've changed head coaches again this year, brought up their middle school coach. Mm-hmm. I'm familiar with him, but not as a head coach. Now, he's done some coaching evidently in the Memphis City school system. Uh, Kendall Herbert played for Jim Stowe over at Lexington in the 80s and was a very fine player. 
What do we know about him and Harding Academy? So Harding Academy, they have their numbers up from last year. Uh, he, and they're athletic. Um, they're going to do some unique stuff defensively uh, that we have to be prepared for, and we have our guys focus on that offensively. They're going to be a spread team. Uh, they're going to look to throw first and then establish the run. Uh, the main thing that we've been preaching to our guys all week is it's never about another opponent. It's always about us and playing up to our standard, the Jackson Christian standard. And so that's what we've been talking to our guys about, and they're responding well. We're having a good week of practice. That is good. Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't watched film on them yet. Usually I try to watch a little bit. But I understand, and Kendall's familiar with it, with 4-4 four, four stack or regular split four type defense. And they will rush everybody with the kitchen sink at you sometimes. <laughs> yes, sir. So their their base is a 4-4 four, four cover three. and so But they will get into some unique fronts, a 5-2 front, a 6-1 box. So we have to be prepared for that, and we have to make sure that our kids are prepared. And, and they're responding well to the different fronts and stunts that they're seeing. Coach, what do you see out of Harding Academy? They, they, they pose, you know, the same kind of threat that, that we face week in, week out. They're going to be athletic. They're going to have guys that can run. They're going to have guys up front that are big. Um, and, and most importantly, you know, when they do the, the unique stuff that he's kind of getting touching on, it's, it's we trust our rules, we do our job, and, and no matter who's across from us, if we execute, we do what we're supposed to do. It doesn't mean we're going to win, but we're going to have a good chance to win and be there in the end. Yeah, it goes back to what we preach every day from day one in the spring. Trust the offense, trust the defense, trust your teammate beside you, own your 111. That's yeah, what you have absolutely. to do. I love it when you say you own that 111. <laughs> I was going to steal it, and if I ever coach basketball again, you need to own your one-fifth in basketball. <laughs> and go. that's not a bad idea. Fans, we're at Hub City Deli. You want to come on down here as soon as the game gets over, and we'll give you some scores a little later on that. And here I go with using the hands. Dr. Benton and I were talking about that. But here's what we want you to do. Right now you're going to have time to call five friends and tell them because you're fixing to see some of the greatest highlights. And coach, both the coaches are going to talk about them. But when we come back here to Hub City Deli, not only can you get you a great sandwich, but you can get you some great highlights. We'll be back after this timeout. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And we are back with the Jackson Christian Eagles show. Two great guests here. Head coach Darby Palmer. Uh, what a fine young coach. And he did something I will talk about after he leaves. But it's nice what I think he did. Great coaching. And, folks, you need to appreciate the positiveness of our football team. Now, we're going to give you some positive. I gave you time to call five friends. We are fixing to have the highlights. And I'm going to turn it over to the coaches and Gary Lockhart. Mr. Gary said, told me he's been working on his intro. I like it, Mr. Gary. Yeah. All right, here we go. This is on our first drive, one of our first scores. We were able to run our counter play right here um, after we've been setting them up with a little power action, um, getting them to overplay, and we were able to strike back door on them. Yeah, that's Boyd in the backfield with Gage Boykin. Good kick out block. Yeah, by good Ty. kick out block by Ty Smith and Wyatt wrapping up in the hole. Here we go. Here's a long – uh, post pattern uh, to Jay. Um, he makes a great play after the ball, but Gage does a great job setting up in the pocket like we, we work on a lot in practice and, and really not overthrowing our shots right here. We saw the middle safety rock down on our rollout, so we thought it would be a good play to get over the top of him, and we were able to get over the top for a big score. Never broke stride. The ball was right there in his hands, and that's, that's just good work. And, folks, sometimes watch the quarterback's hips and things like that. Uh, this, is, this was the hit that you were talking about on their quarterback. Caleb Newsom, uh, a really good edge rusher for us, our dog linebacker, uh, did a great job dipping underneath uh, their right tackles block and getting to the quarterback. Absolutely. Caleb will hit you like a Mack truck. He's gained 20, 30 pounds this offseason. He he's done a great job with his body. And this was a play towards halftime. Um, we throw a little quick screen out to Jay. And that's a lot of second effort. 
Um, he's a really good special player, and you can see the heart that Cam, our, our other leader, down the field blocking for, for Jay. Outstanding team play right there. That was a great play. Uh, not only good blocking by our team, but uh, Jalen gave him the hip on a couple. I mean, watch it on the replay, and he gone. Yeah, this last one here. I believe we have Mr. Cam Boyd. Uh, I'm going to take the. So this this play is designed to hit outside to the edge, but he sees a big gap open up, and uh, we never overcoach our athletes. We tell them, "Hey, go for a couple steps the way that we tell you to go, and then strike it." And Cam does an excellent job getting downhill, avoiding a rusher, but also the huge block by Jay Mosley downfield. And so it it represents our program. Forget about me, I love you. Jay knows that he's not getting a ball in this play, but look at that block by Jay Mosley springing Cam uh, for a big score. And I saw, I thought 72, I didn't get a good angle. Yeah, that was trying, Dalton running downfield. Dalton was trying to get down the field to yep. help his team. And that's special when a big lineman is trying to get down the field to help his running back. Yep. And uh, we're back with that. The uh, What's the difference in coaching from the 60s and 70s we were told to hit that hole, and we better hit the hole. Now they can read and react, can't they? Yes, sir. And, and that's the biggest thing is we have a lot of fine athletes, and, and we don't want to overcoach them. We don't want them being stiff. So we're going to tell them the direction that we want to go. Hey, give us three steps and then strike and then go be a dude. Absolutely. Coach, either one of you got a final comment before we take our break to get Dr. Mark Benton on here, and I think that will be interesting. Darby, I'm going to take up for him. He took time from the uh, elementary game, and we are up still 16 nothing, right? 16 nothing final. Oh, it is a final. a final. So now you got time to come on over here <laughs> and eat and stuff. But he needs to get back over. Coach, your final words. Yeah, so I thought last week we did an outstanding job focusing throughout the week, responding from how all the craziness of Columbia Academy with the weather delays. I'm really excited about our football team and the opportunity that we have this Friday to start off region play. Uh, so I hope that you'll come out and support our guys. Absolutely. Tailgate and all that. Uh, Paul Darby and, and Brian, they don't get to tailgate much. They, <laughs> they focus. I snuck over there before and yeah, got some brisket. Yeah, we're yeah, we're all brisket. for people <laughs> making brisket, burgers, yeah, whatever. Cook it then, up and bring it over. Yeah, bring it over to the coach's office. We'll eat it out. That, hey, help them out in the coach's office. We're going to take a short time out. When we come back, we're going to bring you a very delightful gentleman. And we'll remind you, you can get the Beckham here. That's the name of a sandwich with pimento cheese and brisket. Since you introduced brisket into it, I wonder if Dr. Benton has made up a sandwich with Blake <laughs> Beckham. And we'll have Blake back later in the year to answer your question. Let's take that time out. And when we come back, Dr. Benton. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's Brisket Hoagie with Brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. We are back. Some great information to give you. Not only is Dr. Benton here, and he is very articulate. Trust me on that <laughs> one. But the Jackson Christian Eagle Show is also going to provide you with scores from soccer and from our elementary football. Absolutely, Coach. We'll start with uh, senior night soccer, 2-1 final uh, for the Lady Eagles. We're proud of those girls and uh, thankful for those seniors. And, and then the elementary game, 16-0 uh, final. So defense played well, scored a couple times, and – um, good win against TCA. Pretty solid TCA team. I think both teams are undefeated uh, going into that game tonight. Well, I've got to apologize on air fans a little bit. Uh, Max Nash plays in it, and I'm normally Bill, and I'm sitting down there in the end zone when I'm not. So, uh, Max, I apologize for not being there tonight. But we, we have a lot of important business, and Darby took care of business on that. Now, the uh, also the soccer team, got to tell the girls soccer team, they've had a great year so mm -hmm. far. They went up to the Smoky Mountain Tournament and did well, and they've represented our school well, and we've got a great soccer coach. But now a very special guest, a gentleman that has a great background in education. Um, now, I've got to ask the dumb question on my part. The, uh, you, you went with and was headmaster at the Harding Academy in Arkansas, right? That's okay, correct. Okay, I just wanted to get That's that correct. straight before I get jumped by somebody. We got – 
folks listening. And they, Dr. Benton, we are glad to have you here. And traditionally with our special guest, I always let Coach Bullard open up with the first question. Awesome. Well, we, uh, we had talked about doing this kind of, kind of a staff spotlight, and, and we brought on uh, Blake Beckham last week and, and Dr. Benton. I think we tried to get him on last year and, and maybe just wasn't able to work it out. But I invited him last week or the week before, and, and he was thrilled um, to, to join us. And, and, Dr. Benton, we're glad to have you um, here tonight. And, and I, he, he's talking about your education background. And, and this man loves football. And, and tell us a little bit about your coaching past and, and how uh, you've been involved in football for a long time. Oh, it's an incredible journey that God takes us on. Sometimes uh, we think it's going to go to the right, and then he – takes a quick left and I started at Harding Academy in 1987 and uh, there's a Arkansas Hall of Fame coach by the name of Bill Barden and he came up to me after watching me in my chemistry class and he said coach I'd love for you to join our defensive staff and I said coach Barden I, I really don't think I'm going to be able to contribute to your program and he looked at me and he said coach Benton you're a great teacher you love kids, and you have a passion to motivate them. That's all I need. And so I started with Coach Barden there in the fall of 1988 and uh, loved every minute of it. Um, I came to Jackson Christian in uh, 2009, and uh, in the fall of 2010, ended up coaching football with Matt Underwood with that crew, and what a blessing that was. And, and the irony of it is that when I was at Harding Academy, Tommy Shoemaker was our head football coach. And one day I'm sitting in the locker room just talking and talking ball, and uh, he gets a call from Gray Powell. And Gray Powell tells him, mm -hmm. here's the situation that we're in. That's in 2006. And uh, I remember us just talking and uh, telling Gray, great, your season's not over. Um, you're going to need to make some changes. But here's some things we'd recommend you do. And, and then we started watching Jackson Christian gain momentum and more momentum. And uh, when I was on the sideline, we were at a semifinal game for Harding Academy, and I get a phone call from Gray Powell that says, we just won the state championship. Yes, they did. And so here I am at Harding Academy in Arkansas celebrating a win for Jackson Christian. Uh, three years before I even arrive on the campus. So it's been a neat little journey that God's had me on. Well, you being a defensive man, then you got to appreciate in that contest, we set a record for intercepted passes against the Absolutely. opposition that had a high-flying offense. Absolutely. Had, had remarkable young men on that team, but their, their competitive nature, their desire to fight, I think still defines those young men today. It's still the only goal ball in Jackson, That's Tennessee, right. public <laughs> or private. <laughs> Dr. Got to in there. Got to ask you one other thing. Yes, sir. I also understand, besides being a great chemistry teacher, and you are, I've been told this by a couple of people, and I did a little research. You have taught Bible classes and done an outstanding job, not only at Harding, but also at Jackson Christian School. Yes, sir. Uh, started teaching Bible in uh, 1987. And then uh, in 95, they came to me and said, hey, why don't you start teaching uh, our senior boys? And so it's been an incredible journey of watching young men turn into uh, tremendous leaders. And uh, even today, had the opportunity of having lunch with a young man that graduated in, uh, I believe it was 2012. And he just hit me up on, the, on text and said, any chance you got lunch available and I said yeah absolutely and he's been a, a, a blessing to me and that's that's been true for every young man that I've had the privilege of just sharing the the good news of Jesus Christ with that's yeah, right absolutely so coach talk about a coach I, you're, you're Dr. Good. Ben I call he's, you still, coach. he's still he, coach. Uh, he's still yeah. coach so tell me talk to us about how football um, and the guys that you've interacted with the seniors and a lot of those football guys how does that correlate to life and what kind of what kind of lessons have you seen uh, young folks you learned on the field or young folks that you've been around learn on the field and, and how that translates? Coach Bull, I've had the privilege of, of coaching uh, track, tennis, soccer, and football. And uh, each one of those sports, and I think this is true nearly for every sport, it brings out a different component of character. But I don't believe there's any sport like football 
that can bring out the character individually and collectively. Um, you watch guys running an 800 meter and that, that mental battle of wanting to quit is strong. But you can see that collectively with 11 guys in football. And then to be able to see the synergy that is created by just one or two guys being louder than the voice in their head mm -hmm. to go ahead and persevere. And, and to me, that, that crucible of life, the best example of that is what you learn through your football practice, but also game situations. Oh. I, 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 how many times during the summer are you, are you watching guys with that look in their eye of, I'm done, coach, yeah. I'm done. And then all of a sudden they do another set or two and they realize, no, the, the mind is a lot weaker than I am physically. And being able to train that mind to be stronger than they are physically, uh, th that will carry them in their life. Because I'm 59, and I didn't, no one prepared me for the number of times that spiritually I thought I'm at the end of my rope. Mm -hmm. and, and that happens. And if you can take these lessons that they're learning as 16, 17, 18-year-old young men and, and transfer it to when they're 35, 42, to I am not going to quit. I'm not going to quit on my family. I'm not going to quit on God. I'm not going to quit on my job situation. I'm not going to quit on my kids. To me, football is a very unique crucible that cultivates that character in a very powerful way. Absolutely. Absolutely. God is our head coach. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, Dr. Benton, um, when you walk out there and, and you – when you're at games and, and you're mostly away and home with us as well, is there a more fired up athletic director on the sideline um, <laughs> than, than Jason Shelton? Oh my goodness. So I've had the privilege of, of having um, four different men serve as athletic directors. And um, Coach Shelton brings a unique set of skills. Uh, his knowledge of athletics, his knowledge of the sport, his knowledge of being able to see in the kids' eyes where they are mm -hmm. is, is a gift. But to me, the greatest gift that I have is just watching him get pumped up. Yeah. I, I mean. A couple times I thought he was going to come out on the field. I, I know. Yeah. And, you know, you know, Chuck Morris was the guy that you recall was That's having right. to pull back. But yeah. now there's a couple of times I have to look at Coach Shelton and say, oh, oh <laughs> be careful there. Coach Shelton is a unique guy. I knew him when he was a tall, skinny. He was the tallest second baseman in high school in the right? state Probably of Probably in America. Yeah. yeah, possibly in America. Yeah. And then he worked with Don Meyer. Now, the one thing he's got – now, Don was kind of stoic at time. Jason has that enthusiasm. Folks, sometimes sneak a peek at Jason. If something's happening or if it's not happening, Jason's a great cheerleader. He's got a lot of enthusiasm. He's a great Christian young man. And I know that Coach Meyer, the late Don Meyer, is very proud of him too. No, no doubt. And the thing that – captured my heart for coach Shelton when I was interviewing him was as he was talking about his coaching days and he began to name specific players he teared up and being dean of student and also athletic director is it's a it's two full-time jobs absolutely merged into one but you love his excitement and passion not because it's a win but because he's seeing the victories that are happening in the hearts and the minds of our players and our kids at school. Dr. Bennett, as we wrap up, um, talk about this version of the Jackson Christian Eagles. And, and we hadn't prepared you for any of these questions. Uh, so what, what do you see from this team um, specifically, you know, on the field this year, defensively, offensively, whatever you want to, whatever you want to break down? So, and I, I don't know how much time I have, but let me. Got a little over a minute. Okay, so go. let me try to be go. succinct here. It, it is, it's reflected in their body language. It's a way they carry themselves. There's a, there's a level of confidence, not arrogance, mm. that they bring to the field that I love. And, and there is a team unit that is pretty special. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm not seeing. Um, some of the silos that sometimes you see on a team where it's this guy that's really trying to control his performance, his individual performance. What I'm seeing is it's a collective unit saying, no, we're one and we're in this battle together. Absolutely. And, and as, we, as we wrap up, we like to give uh, you know, our guest uh, a couple seconds just to talk about to the Jackson community, to the football guys, 
uh, to the guys maybe you've you've got you've had in Bible in the past uh, at Jackson Christian. What would you like to say? We appreciate you coming on, by the way. You bet. Yes, what we would do. you like to say to those guys or, or this community as you sign off? Oh well, as a sign off, number one, I believe we've got the greatest group of families that's ever been assembled for my life. And so I've worked for a long time, it's 35 years, Christian education, and I love our families. But I also would want our guys, the guys that I've had an opportunity to walk life with, to let them know you're never going to be able to um, lose God's love for you and to constantly guard your heart. The battlefield's the mind, and uh, we've been given an opportunity to live victoriously because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Amen. Uh, I started calling him coach, too, because <laughs> I feel so comfortable. I'm into the coaching part. Our president of the school, Dr. Mark Benton, we want you to come back. And one night, come by the pregame show and talk to Dave. I'll be glad Wade to. And I. We would love to have you. Text and this me gentleman and knows there. football. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> We've got to take a time Dr. out. Man, thank you, sir. Here Thanks at you. Hub City Deli. And when we come back, we're going to have the one and only, the golden arm man himself, Gage Boykin, will be with us on the Jackson Christian Eagles show. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And it would help if I punched my own button. I got Coach on and I got Gage Boykin on. We're fixing to interview one of the finest young men I know. He can shoot. Uh, he has no range or conscience shooting a basketball, but we're not shooting basketballs right now. No. We are throwing footballs, and he spent a lot of time uh, perfecting his craft this summer. And you saw, now you didn't get to see it or unless you were watching, Gage. We had the highlight of that one. Uh, Jalen didn't even have to break stride. It hit him in hands. That was the perfect pass to the perfect man at that possible time. Quick thought about that, and then Coach Bull is going to have the first question for you. About the play? Yeah, about that play. I don't know. You just let it rip? or I mean, Jalen Jalen's down there. I mean, that's kind of like that's where he's supposed to be. That's where the ball was. Well, what did you see at that time? Do you see him breaking open? Because you had to throw it before he completely got open. Cause yes, sir. You wait till he gets open. Sometimes it's too late. Yes, sir. So you, you visualize all the whole field and stuff. And Do you like throwing it out of the spread rather than dropping back from the, on the three, five, and seven from under center? Uh, I mean, I don't really mind. I like rolling out a lot more, especially to the – I mean, I like rolling out to the side I'm not throwing to. Like that play was back, like I threw it to the other side. That's like my favorite thing. Well, you especially made some smart runs this year where you picked up at least three big first downs and two of them were in late crucial situations that if we have to punt the ball back to them, even though we know Zach's going to get a good punt off, they could have had enough time to have taken it, and you've gotten us some important first downs. Do you like running the football and a you know, little RPO action every once in a while? Eh, it's all right, <laughs> but I'd rather pass. He'd rather pass. I like it. Coach Bull? Yeah, we're, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about Gage's numbers. Um, six of nine passing, 229 yards in the air, uh, three touchdowns. And, and, you know, we talked about the um, the bomb there early, uh, and, and that was kind of, I think, our second touchdown. Um, and, and, you know, we're not going to keep harping on that. Gage, Gage just uh, made a good read, and, you know, Coach Riker dot up a good play, and it's yeah. two good players executing. Um, Gage, I want you to talk a little bit about um, there's 10 seconds left in the first half. And and we're talked a little bit about we're a little out of sync. We we you know do we go do we kneel it and go to half? And Coach Reichert says Let, let's try to make a play. And mm -hmm. so we we throw a little little now screen to Jay and and just that helps the yardage, right? You, you, yeah. It's not a long pass, but talk about um, that and and what kind of and what what transpired after that. Uh, usually those plays, I mean, you either get five yards or you get a touchdown. And, I mean, the way everybody blocked on that play and the way Jalen ran, that was just perfect. 
I need a mic up. There you go. Oh, there yeah. Go. Raise is that better? I, well, That's I got to ask him going along with better. this. All right. Um, <clears throat> that play, obviously, that was where you were supposed to go. But I see you – is it easier this year to go through your progressions and, ten and go to a secondary receiver? Yeah, ten times easier. It is. But you look – and you did a good job of, of – ECS really wasn't sure you were going to Jalen on that one. Yes, sir. They had a hesitation in their step and – then uh, you made a nice throw to him because those throws aren't automatic that they're always going to get to their hands, and he made the nice run. Is there. Gage, we, we talked a couple weeks ago before that, that first game at North Point, and I just asked you out there on the field, I don't know if you remember the conversation, but I asked you, um, it's your last go around, and, you know, how you were feeling about that. So, so we, you know, we're four games, four games in. Um, how are you feeling about, about where this team is, about where you are as a senior, about about your career. we got a lot of football left to play. But how are you feeling so far, not quite halfway through your senior year? I'm feeling great. I love it. There's nothing like football at all. I'm going to miss the crap out of it when it's gone, but there's so nothing it, like it. So is it this <clears> guy, it's the football or is it these guys? I know you have a good relationship uh, with a lot of these these guys on our team, and and what is it for you that that's making this an enjoyable season? Uh, it's mostly the relationships. Um, you can be really good at football. Like Jalen's the best receiver I've ever had in football. But even if Jalen wasn't that good, Jalen would still be my best friend. And I guess I'm gonna miss football when it's gone, but I'm gonna miss my friends a whole lot because they're what make it fun. Like, it's, it's we could be winning, but, I mean, if we're winning together, it makes it a lot more fun. It's special at Jackson Christian. A lot of friends, a lot of good things happen. Let me hit a couple of up-close yes, and personal questions for him because people want to know, uh, first of all, and you don't have to quote the whole verse uh, if you don't want to, but what's your favorite Bible verse? First Corinthians 10.31. Right. Yeah, and that's a good one to have, too. Now, what about sports memories at Jackson Christian School? What's your favorite memory? One that I'll remember forever is Alden's game-winning field goal um, my sophomore year against USJ. That was – I'll remember that forever. Um, but I feel like one of the ones that's most, like, like personal is my first high school touchdown pass to Jalen against North Point last year. Absolutely. What's a fun fact that people don't know about Gage Boykin? Mm. Do you like shooting a three from out of bounds or wherever? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people know a lot about me because I like to talk. But, I mean, I love cars. I, love that's cars. what I was going to say. Tell him about you. He's a car guy. Yeah, so. oh, I, love, I love my car. I love all the cars. Well, not all cars, just I know a lot about cars. Well, last of the up close and personal questions. Understand one of your hobbies, maybe your main one, is fishing. How good a fisherman are you? Heck no. No? Um, I mean, I <laughs> somebody, like fishing. Somebody told me to ask you that. Somebody pulling a joke on you and me both, aren't they? I like fishing. It's just I'm not very good at oh, it. Oh, that's what I, I knew you You're liked. not patient enough. No. Yeah, yeah like, I can see that. Well, he wants to throw a touchdown pass. That's right. <laughs> yeah. can't do that. Coach, got a couple other. I think we got two minutes left. Gage, um, Harding Academy coming up this week. And, you know, we talked about it with Coach P earlier. They posed some different challenges as far as some different looks and – um, we're not going to give away what we're going to do. But just talk about, you know, how we have to execute as a team when we're going to get some kind of non-traditional defensive fronts and, and looks there in the secondary. We're really going to have to get our blocks this week. Um, if we don't get our blocks, we are not going to get much done. Um, it's usually always on the line. That's where it starts. But it's really going to have to be on the line this week. Um, Harding has six people, sometimes seven, on the line, and we'll have to get some extra people blocking down there. Cam's gonna, Cam or Elijah's gonna have to do a little bit extra this week because they're coming after me. They have multiple fronts, but the four-four, yes, four, which you can stun a lot out. We used to run the split four in mm -hmm. North Side. There's a lot of things to do. You have to make the read, the lineman's calls, and they have to get their blocks, and you can't be, leave a gap open or there'll yes, be sir. a linebacker in there yeah. chasing. Mm. So, you're you're saying that that we have to make sure that we cover up our our gaps and and execute our blocks, and then you know our athletes will take care of the rest. Oh yeah, Gage, we uh, appreciate you coming on, and as as we 
we tend to do, and I'm still in this from from Coach Joe here. Um, you know, you have a, about 30 seconds to a minute. Talk talk to the Jackson Christian community, your your student section, your fans, uh, your family. Just just give you some time to talk before we uh, sign off with you. Uh, student section is great. Um, everybody out there is 100 percent of the game the whole time. There's not a dull moment from that student section. <laughs> And the fans are awesome. Uh, when we score a touchdown down at that uh, next to the field house, mm -hmm. seeing those people sitting there just crowded up behind the end zone is just awesome. That's to cool see. to see, isn't it? That's awesome. And and that's one thing. Uh, if I could have played in a place like that, I, I would love those fans are just five, six, seven rows deep down there and, yes, and supportive as well. That's a that's a great great point you made. What else you got for us? Mm, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Gage is very modest. He does want you to come see the whole team play. Oh, yeah. And say something nice about Gibson. That's his sister. Um, I love you, Gibson. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're going to take a time out on that. When you've oh, heard the, and Gabby. There you go. Yeah, you can't, can't forget now. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, and uh, no grants listening, but we've got to take a time out here. We've got another fine young man just like Gage Boykin coming up. We'll be back with Jalen Mosley on the Jackson Christian Eagles show. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. Back here on the Jackson Christian Eagle Show that you can watch on Jackson Christian School, School's Facebook. And it will also uh, be archived to Paul Schultz of Worthy Road Studios does that. I do need to remind everybody these are copyright broadcast and you cannot uh, repeat these. You can go watch them because, like I said, it'll be archived. It'll be there uh, in perpetuity is that word Paul likes sometimes that I use. But it'll be there a long time and it, it, great shows. Come on down. And We've had people even out on the patio tonight. They've got a great patio here. Good food and uh, they do close at 8 tonight and, of course, Jalen will be our last interview and Coach Bull and I will finish it up. But, Jalen, we are glad to have you here not only you were in two, what, two of the four highlight uh, yep. that we had. And Jalen had a great week, and his pass, his and Gage's pass, was something you need to go back and watch. The game is archived on YouTube. Watch it. Jalen never breaks stride, focuses, looks the ball right into his hands, does everything a good receiver will do. Gage put it right on the money, and he wound up. Gage has got a very strong arm. And uh, – that's that's a great play. Is, is that when you're favored or you got some other favorites that you got? Because you made a pretty good run on the low screen pass out there, too. Uh, I mean, my favorite play is me blocking. But, uh, Push it up. Dang it. We'll pull it up just a little bit. Let's try it now, Jalen. And we do have to adjust, and we only got 30 seconds every time to adjust with the mics. Go ahead, Jalen. Oh, well, uh, my favorite play always going to be, you know, me blocking for Cam. I just love that play for some reason. But, yeah, the other than that, the run with the biscuit, that's that's up there with um, the long pass I had or touchdown I had. Any, any defensive play sticks out? Because this young man's one of our safeties now. and He does a good job, and he has saved a couple of touchdowns this year too. I mean, I, they don't throw it my way that much. So. <laughs> Can't really do much on defense. Yeah, when they well, you've come way. up and run supported. Coach, I know you've got some really valuable information on this young man. Absolutely. And um, Jay had four rushes, 35 yards and a touchdown. And the big the big production here, four receptions, 169 yards, um, two touchdowns in the air. And and what I like about Jay is, is what he said to start and – um, he's loud. I don't know why he's being quiet tonight. He's he's normally loud and carrying on, um, but on the block downfield for Cam Boyd, and how Jay is is down there blocking. And if if you see it reversed, if Jay's running the football, Cam's going to be out in front uh, blocking folks. And and so 
um, just guys that are that are team players and, and, and great players and great athletes. But, Jay, take us through. Uh, Gage didn't really give us a whole lot on that uh, on that you know the long bomb there, uh, the second drive of the game. What what kind of route were you running? What did you see from the defense, and, and what did you see from your quarterback? I, I had a post on that play. I had a post, and I seen that the it was a one high safety, and he was down. So I knew I had to get over the top of that, and I trust I trust Gage to make that throw because Gage can throw the ball. So I just ran my route. I looked back the ball in there, and catch the ball, in. and and early on he's he's kind of overthrown a couple of those balls. So that had to feel really good uh, for you guys to be on the same page and to get that timing down because a lot of guys are – a lot of teams are going to be focused on our run game and, and you've got to be able to take the top off the defense. So it had to feel good for you all to complete that pass. And um, does is it – that ball's in there for a long time. Uh, do you get nervous or is it just kind of second nature to you? No, nah, I don't get nervous. Just second nature. So then we had the, the big play uh, right before halftime. Uh, we were trying to see if we could – uh, break a break a long run, and, and we throw a now screen to you. Um, and and what you see in front of you, what we're able to get done. On that play, I seen um, I was going to the outside, and it was a lot of people there. So I just cut in, and next thing you know, I'm running for a touchdown. And this. Yeah. No, I believe five people had a slight hand at you. They didn't catch you, and yeah, you left did. them in your dust. <laughs> Yeah. Then we had Cam down there blocking with me. Well, That's he had a great run through block, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got two people on there. Got the man he's supposed to get and mm -hmm. ran through him. Got another one. And that is great about that. Coach, you got another question or do I need to do the up close let's, and personal? Let's, let's do a couple of things. Yeah, let's go there. Okay, now let's start with your Bible verse. And, and you don't have to give it all. If you just give the verse, let people know our, our football team is like family. Family goes to church and stuff with each other. and we believe in each other and God. But, Jalen, what's your favorite verse? Well, my favorite Bible verse always been Psalms 23 because it just lets you know that God always going to be there for you no matter how hard times get. God is always there for you. Amen. I, I am glad you said that one. That was a good one. And, of course, your favorite sports memory, whether it's at Jackson Christian or anywhere, because I'm going to ask you what your favorite football memory is here in a minute. Well, well, what's your favorite one overall? Is it maybe uh, – for example, a UT touchdown. I know you love UT. Is there something that happened to UT that you like in the college ranks? Well, I say, well, my favorite football, I would say, as in high school, is scoring my first touchdown. Because it's, you know, just coming from middle school to high school, then scoring your first touchdown in a high school game, it just feels good. Well, that pretty well takes care of that. Now, favorite food? And my favorite food is. Mac and cheese. Mac and yeah. cheese. He had some tonight. Yeah. They, they got some it. good that, stuff up oh, here. Oh, they've yeah. got some yeah. good mac and cheese. And, of course, what's your favorite class in teacher? My favorite class this year is chemistry. Chemistry. Yeah. Wow. Now, I'm impressed with that. Yeah. Yeah. I was just looking to get through Mr. Pachoni's class, but that was eons ago. <laughs> and uh, the what's a fun fact? Something that people would like to hear about you that none of us know. Oh, I like to play the drums. I play the drums. So you are a drummer. Now, yes, you don't sir. play in a garage band or anything no. like that, do you? Yeah. Jay, I didn't even know that. Man, I'm learning something new tonight. Well, the band director will be after I him. I know. Man. That's right. He'll be yeah. playing at halftime. <laughs> the, uh, what's your hobbies? Oh, um, football, playing a game, going to sleep. I do the same thing every day, really. I okay. Yeah. A, a man that knows what that's he's right. doing. Coach, you got a couple other questions. I think we've got about a minute a half to two minutes so we don't we don't have to give anything away um but you got plans for lord willing uh after college to, or excuse me after high school to keep playing um when we you sat down with coach palmer and myself today just there in the cafeteria give give uh give us a couple couple schools that are interested in you and and just a brief plan for you and how you're going to approach the recruiting process uh um i have know Ole Miss and Northern Dame and schools like that and I haven't been on visits yet but I feel like once I go on visits that'll uh, open my eyes more into how what school I want to go to. Absolutely. Yeah, and there are schools that that I happen to know some of the coach staff they call and ask about this young man and others sometimes and so you never know Jalen when somebody's watching you but you don't know that they are watching and you know what he does, though? He gives you 100% when he goes out there. So he doesn't have to worry about you can't play part of the time. I 
played with some guys that they only played when they thought scouts were watching them. No. But Jalen doesn't let down. Coach, I guess we need to give him his final comment. Jalen, yeah, you can say anything you want to, not only to the students and faculty, but fans, relatives, it's your turn to say anything you want to. I mean, uh, Friday, you know, we play hard in the county. We play hard, hard in county. Hard at academy. Seven, academy. There you go. At seven at JCS. I want everybody to be there. You know, it's going to be a fun game, and we're going to put it on the show like we always do. We are, and I'll tell you something I didn't get to tell Gage, but their head coach is from Lexington, and, you know, we like to – like to play folks from Lexington. He actually played a long time ago and uh, probably played not quite the same time your dad did, but uh, they were in the same general area. But we're going to give it all, and there's also a tailgate party. You, I, and Coach Buller, though we don't get to go to it, it'll, it'll be going on while we're getting ready to play football. And, uh, Coach, I guess what we need to do is take our last time out and come back. We're going to wrap it up. We'll have a couple of things against – uh, against we're always against the opposition, but That's we'll right. have a couple of things about the opposition, and we will wind up our Jackson Christian Eagle show for Tuesday night. Pub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And we are back for the wrap-up of the Jackson Christian Eagle Show. We've had a great night tonight. Appreciate Dr. Benton coming by, of course, Darby, and our two great guests, Gage Boykin and Jalen Mosley. And, Coach, you got a big award announcement to make tonight, one of our prestigious awards. Absolutely. We're going to talk about our Twitter poll, and then we're going to get into some other stuff that our, our guys and our team are nominated for. But the uh, Freedom Hartman Player of the Week voted on by the Twitter uh, folks, and there was 48 votes there in our final poll uh, and Jay Mosley is, and we should have talked about that while he was on. Jay Mosley is our winner. Um, once we once again, four rushes, 35 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, four catches, 169 yards, and two touchdowns. Going up against his teammates, Gage uh, Boykin, Cam Boyd, two pretty good uh, guys to be in company with there. But Jay received uh, 60% of the votes, and, and we're proud of him uh, for that. Also, uh, we are nominated for the WBBJ Team of the Week. Um, Jay's nominated for the WBBJ Player of the Week. And then Cam Boyd is nominated for the Jackson Sun uh, Player of the Week. And Cam picked up his ninth 100-yard um, game of his career. Um, and, you know, our, you talked about our line. And Coach McLean runs a, our Twitter account, does a great job. And each week, if we get over 100, he does what it's called lineman love. And he puts a good picture of the line on there um, and, and puts the stats from our running backs and – and these running backs know they couldn't do it without those guys, and they put out another good performance, and uh, we're proud of them. So if you're if it's voting is still going on, make sure you get on there and vote and, and get these guys um, more attention that they deserve. Absolutely. I want to encourage our fans to make sure you focus on, uh, and you can see you have to adjust these things sometimes, focus on this game. Let's not look ahead. we got, we got to get this one taken care of. I know Coach Reichert is probably looking forward to this game because he's a graduate of Harding. That's Academy. right. And yeah. nothing would be better for him than to have a win this week. And I just got this message that um, – Coach Palmer just told me we won the team of the week. And so that's that's even better than our guys getting individual, you know, awards. And so we were able to um, win that WBBJ team of the week. We're proud of our guys. And, and you said it best, um, we're worried about the game that's at hand. And, you know, you can't you can't look past any week. And, and we are – we're getting prepared. Guys are working hard, uh, practicing hard. And we're excited. And we talk about this each and every week. But we're excited for another opportunity – um, for our guys to play together and for our young guys to see them and for the guys standing on the rail, our fifth and sixth grade team, and, you know, even my seven-year-old son and his friends watching. And it's just a good um, a good opportunity on a Friday night to come out. We did – the game is at 7 o'clock. 
Um, it, it was originally 7.30, but we moved it up to 7 o'clock with the weather being um, pretty mild. Um, and there will be an ELV tailgate, which is our er early learning village uh, tailgate down there. And we got six-week-old babies to pre-K. Um, it'll be their tailgate. They're going to get a – if your family comes, they're going to get a ticket to the game. Uh, there's going to be some uh, an ice cream truck there that they can, you know, buy and get some ice cream. And we've – the tailgating is kind of picking up, and this is awesome. And we've had other folks say, hey, because the ELV is having a tailgate, can we not? And that answer is absolutely you can. Um, I was talking to, to Mr. Beckham about it today, and, and you can tailgate down to the lower spot, uh, bring your food. And I did. A couple of coaches, we snuck over there to uh, – Get some brisket last week, and that stuff was pretty pretty good. And yes, so, it was. we I saw pictures from it, and I I love those folks coming out early, setting up tents, setting up chairs, and and having the music going and kids playing. And you know, shout out to our band for their playing and our cheerleaders there painting faces. And you know, that's not always easy. It's not always easy to get you know the different programs together um, and involved in that. But it's really turning into everybody walking over and having a great crowd you know in the bleachers in the end zone you know line in the rails all that stuff a lot of excitement about jackson christian football and we just want to go out and execute and take care of our business on friday soccer team wins today the girls soccer team the elementary football team another big victory no game tomorrow night go to church it's wednesday night and the thursday night middle school game i believe west bemis um they are coming to our house. Yep. Okay, they are coming to our house. Question popped in. I mean, yep. Coach will tell you I'm reading my text. They want to know, is the concession stand going to be open Thursday night? Because it was for the JV game, and people loved it. Yeah, we had the concession going yesterday. Um, Chuck Ray grilling burgers again tonight for the fifth and sixth grade game. And then we will have our middle school playing West Bemis, and, and the burgers and the food will be rolling again on Thursday. A lot of home stuff going on at, at Jackson Christian and – uh, exciting week to showcase our fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, our middle school, and then our high school on Friday. It's Seven o'clock kickoff, six thirty. The game time. It'll be on Jackson Christian's Facebook. Then Paul will provide links to like the ball game blitz to uh, WNWS.com. But the main picture is on Jackson Christian's Facebook, and we emphasize six thirty with the pregame because on the schedule it shows it as a seven thirty game. Yeah. Well, it's now a 7 o'clock kickoff, 6.30 pregame. And then Saturday, I want to remind all of you flag football coaches that the coaches are putting on a clinic for our fine flag football league. And I believe you're going to have a son playing that yep, football absolutely. league. Yep, absolutely. We're going to be kicking up here, um, partnering with, with some folks from the community and going to have our football flag football league going again in our second year. First year, we had a really good turnout, some really good football played on Saturday mornings and one night a week. And so – um, we're excited about that. I know my son is excited to get rolling with that. And there's a lot of good things happening. We want to, you know, a, a school president has a lot going on. And for him to come and spend some time with us tonight um, is tremendous. Um, and it was an honor to have Dr. Benton with us. And um, I believe next week's segment we're going to have another alumni on, and that's going to be exciting. Um, so we're trying to bring in some community folks and make this about family like we talk about because you can talk about it, but you have to do it. You have to show it. And you have to be about it. And so that's what we're really trying to do. We do it. We do our 111th even though there's more than 111th. That's though. right. I love what Darby says. Coach, you've got about 15, 20 seconds to uh, make a final comment. Uh, just excited to get to work, excited to keep preparing for another opponent, another opportunity to see, you know, number 12, number 23, Number three there in the backfield. Number one, we got a bunch of weapons, and we got to trying to spread the ball around. And you know, our line's working hard, defense is playing hard, um, and, and we're excited for another Friday night at, at Ronner Fowler, Ron, excuse me, Ronnie Fowler Stadium. Um, and and thank you for Hub City for having us tonight and feeding our guys, and um, just a, a good night. And for all the Eagles, the coaching staff, Dr. Mark Benton, and our special guest. We're going to get ready to give you the traditional sign-off of any rebroadcast, retransmission, or further use of this broadcast without the express written consent of Worthy Road Studios is prohibited. Thank Gary Lockhart for his outstanding job, and we're going to say thanks for your time this time till next time. Good night, all.